Very little is left of the ancient North American monuments. More than 90% of the structures that were documented are now completely gone. And of the less than 10% that remain, the majority have been vandalized and destroyed. Everybody's heard about the Aztecs. Everybody's heard about the Maya. But before the Aztecs and before the Maya, there were a culture who are referred to as the Olmecs. I explored the Olmec mystery uh, in considerable depth. At the turn of the 19th to the 20th century, an era brimming with curiosity and the spirit of discovery, the ancient civilizations of Mesoamerica began to captivate scholars and adventurers alike. This period, steeped in Victorian-era fascination, saw ancient cultures not as relics of the past, but as windows into a grand, albeit lost, world. The settlement story of the Americas is much more complicated uh, than we've, you know, than, we, than we've realized. Fueled by a mix of exploration, colonization, and a penchant for romanticizing the unknown, people were drawn to the mysteries that ancient societies held. Institutions in Europe and the United States, including museums and universities, recognized the value of understanding these indigenous civilizations. They began to fund expeditions, not just for the sake of collecting artifacts, but to delve deeper into the history and culture of these ancient peoples. This marked a significant shift in archaeology, transforming it from a quest for treasures to a scientific discipline focused on careful excavation and analysis. This is part of a a curious mystery that is not unconnected to the genetic mystery. The Olmec civilization, with its colossal heads and intricate stone structures, was one of the earliest to be uncovered. Yet in these initial stages, many artifacts were mistakenly attributed to the more familiar Maya and Aztec civilizations. This was largely due to their apparent similarities in artistic style and because these civilizations were better understood at the time. Uh, it's been known by archaeologists for quite a long time that there are anomalous skulls uh, in parts of Brazil. The unique aspects of Olmec art and iconography were not immediately recognized, highlighting the challenges faced by early archaeologists in differentiating between the complex cultures of the region. Two figures who played a pivotal role in bringing the wonders of Mesoamerica to the Western world were John Lloyd Stevens and Frederick Catherwood. Their expeditions, documented in Incidents of Travel in Central America, Chiapas and Yucatan, and Incidents of Travel in Yucatan, not only introduced the Maya civilization to many, but also set a standard for future archaeological work. Their detailed illustrations and engaging narratives captured the imagination of the public, sparking a wave of interest in ancient Mesoamerican cultures. This era also saw the beginnings of comparative archaeology, where discoveries from Mesoamerica were placed in a global context, offering new perspectives on the development of human societies. Museums evolved from mere collections of curiosities to centers of research and education, significantly contributing to the dissemination of knowledge about these ancient cultures. Furthermore, the late 19th and early 20th centuries witnessed the emergence of interdisciplinary approaches in archaeology, incorporating anthropology, linguistics, and even early environmental science, which enriched the understanding of Mesoamerican civilizations. The story of how the colossal stone heads became recognized as a key to understanding the Olmec civilization is a fascinating tale of curiosity, exploration, and eventual enlightenment within the archaeological world. Initially stumbled upon by Western archaeologists in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, these massive sculptures, some towering over nine feet tall and weighing several tons, presented a mystery. But what's fascinating about them is they are, they are supposedly the first high civilization of Central America. With their distinctive facial features, including flat noses and fleshy cheeks and often adorned with helmet-like headgear, they captivated those who found them but left many questions unanswered. What, what do we think those helmets were that they were wearing? Nobody knows, because no physical example of such a helmet has ever been found, just like no physical example of an Egyptian pharaoh's helm, a crown has, has ever been found. The first significant acknowledgement of these heads came from Jose Melgari Serrano in 1862, when he uncovered one at Tres Zapotes in Veracruz. Melgar described the sculpture as having Ethiopian features, a reflection of the era's interpretations and biases underscoring how little was known about the Olmecs then. 
Although Melgar's discovery was groundbreaking, it was initially seen as an isolated find rather than evidence of a broader, unknown civilization. For decades, these colossal heads were viewed more as curious anomalies rather than vital cultural artifacts. Without a wider archaeological context, their true significance was overlooked, and they were sometimes wrongly attributed to other known civilizations like the Maya or Aztec, or even to entirely speculative, unknown cultures. It was a puzzle missing its broader picture, waiting for the pieces to be put together. The narrative began to shift in the mid-20th century, thanks to more focused and systematic excavations in the Olmec heartland, led by archaeologists such as Matthew Sterling. These efforts unearthed additional colossal heads alongside other artifacts, helping to piece together the puzzle of the Olmec civilization. It was through this dedicated work that the Olmecs were finally recognized as a distinct and influential culture in Mesoamerica, predating and potentially influencing subsequent civilizations like the Maya and Aztecs. In 1945, a groundbreaking expedition led by Matthew Sterling to San Lorenzo Tenochtitlan dramatically advanced our understanding of the Olmec civilization, an enigmatic culture that laid the foundational stones of Mesoamerican history. Recognizing the potential significance of these sites, the Smithsonian Institution stepped in, providing the necessary support and funding for a more thorough exploration. The vastness of San Lorenzo, spreading across several kilometers, presented another hurdle. It was impossible to excavate the entire site in one go, so Sterling and his team had to make strategic decisions about where to dig, prioritizing areas where surface finds indicated the presence of significant artifacts. This meticulous approach to excavation was critical, requiring careful planning, mapping, and a methodical technique to ensure the delicate artifacts, some centuries old, were preserved for future study. As they cleared the jungle overgrowth and dug into the ancient soil, Sterling's team was not just unearthing artifacts, they were also piecing together the story of the Olmec civilization. Every artifact, every stone, and every fragment of pottery added a new chapter to our understanding of this ancient culture. The detailed recording and documentation of their findings were essential, providing a basis for future analysis and helping to paint a fuller picture of the Olmec way of life. San Lorenzo, dating back to around 1200 to 900 BCE, stands as a monumental beacon in the study of Mesoamerican history, often celebrated as the oldest major city in the region. This ancient city predates the civilizations of the Maya and Aztecs, providing a unique glimpse into the dawn of complex societies in the Americas. Thanks to radiocarbon dating, researchers have been able to pin down the timeline of San Lorenzo, offering a clearer view of the Olmec civilization's early days. Among the most striking discoveries at San Lorenzo, the site has yielded jade figurines and Celts, indicating robust trade networks and the cultural significance of jade. An array of pottery styles found at the site offers insights into daily life, artistic expression, and the Olmec's trade relations. The discovery of large structures, including platforms and possible elite residences, points to a highly organized society capable of mobilizing significant labor resources. The urban layout of San Lorenzo, organized around a central axis, reflects a thoughtfully planned development. The existence of distinct ceremonial and residential areas suggests a sophisticated urban structure, possibly mirroring social hierarchies within the Olmec society. In the 1950s, the archaeological spotlight turned to La Venta, an Olmec site in Tabasco, Mexico, building on the momentum of earlier discoveries at San Lorenzo. This shift marked a significant phase in unraveling the mysteries of the Olmec civilization, regarded as one of the earliest complex societies in Mesoamerica. With a renewed interest in the Olmec culture, archaeologists like Philip Drucker and Robert Heiser applied advanced methods and interdisciplinary approaches to dig deeper into the site's secrets, offering a more comprehensive understanding of this ancient civilization. La Venta thrived between approximately 900 to 400 BCE, a period that witnessed the peak of Olmec cultural and artistic development. This era underscored the Olmec's remarkable achievements in architecture, art, and urban planning, setting a precedent for subsequent Mesoamerican cultures. Among the distinct features of La Venta is the Great Pyramid, a monumental structure made of earth and clay, noted for its unique conical shape. Unlike the pyramidal structures that would later dominate Mesoamerican landscapes, 
The Great Pyramid's design and scale highlight the Olmec's advanced engineering skills and their capacity for organizing large-scale construction projects. This pyramid, along with other structures at the site, was aligned with celestial bodies, hinting at the Olmec's sophisticated understanding of astronomy and suggesting its role as a ceremonial and cultural hub. The systematic excavation efforts at La Venta brought to light not only architectural innovations but also a wealth of artifacts, including the iconic colossal heads carved from basalt, believed to represent rulers or significant figures within Olmec society. Similarly, altars adorned with intricate carvings provided glimpses into the civilization's mythology and rituals. La Venta also revealed complex burial sites and offerings, including serpentine mosaic pavements, which offered insights into the civilization's funerary practices and religious beliefs. These findings have been instrumental in piecing together the social structure, religious practices and artistic achievements of the Olmec civilization, significantly influencing the study of Mesoamerican archaeology. However, the preservation of La Venta faces challenges due to the tropical climate and human factors, underscoring the importance of ongoing research and conservation efforts. The exploration of La Venta in the 1950s was a watershed moment in understanding the depth and complexity of the Olmec civilization, providing a foundation for future studies and ensuring the legacy of this pivotal culture in Mesoamerican history remains appreciated and preserved. But what's fascinating about them is they are, they are supposedly the first high civilization of Central America, that they create structures on a massive scale that you can see connections between them and the later, the later Maya. For the Maya, the Milky Way was a particularly important feature of the heavens. They conceived of it as the road that led to their netherworld, Zibalba. In the verdant lands of Central America, the ancient Maya civilization flourished with a mysterious brilliance that continues to captivate the world. Among the many enigmas they left behind, their profound understanding of astronomy stands as a testament to their intellectual prowess. Graham Hancock, a modern explorer of ancient mysteries, delves deep into this aspect of the Maya, proposing intriguing theories that stretch the bounds of conventional history. That whole mystery of the Mayan calendar was clearly inherited from the Olmecs. It wasn't something the Maya ah. made up. The Olmecs used that same symbolism. So the Mayan calendar is actually an Olmec calendar. The Maya long count calendar, a marvel of ancient engineering, intricately tracked a 5,125-year cycle with astonishing precision. This calendar wasn't just a tool for marking time. It was a complex understanding of celestial cycles, intertwining the Maya's daily lives with the cosmos. Hancock suggests that this precision hints at a deeper, possibly inherited, knowledge of astronomy. Was this sophisticated understanding a legacy from a much older, now lost civilization? When one looks at the grandeur of Maya structures such as the pyramid at Chichen Itza, the brilliance of their astronomical alignment is striking. During the equinoxes, the play of light and shadow on this pyramid creates the illusion of a serpent slithering down its steps. To Hancock, these architectural marvels are not just buildings, but celestial maps, echoing an advanced understanding of the cosmos. Orion was extensively involved in Mayan rebirth beliefs, which described the constellation and specifically its three belt stars as the turtle of rebirth. In Egypt, as amongst the Maya, the stellar context involves Orion and the Milky Way. The Maya's awareness of the ecliptic, the path followed by the sun, moon, and planets across the sky, further fuels Hancock's theories. Their ability to predict solar and lunar eclipses and track the movements of Venus, which they revered as the god Kukulkan, showcases their deep astronomical knowledge. Did they learn this from an older civilization? Hancock wonders. A civilization lost in the depths of time. Hancock theorizes that the Maya might have been part of a vast network of ancient civilizations, sharing knowledge across seas and continents. This global maritime culture, as he envisages, could have been a conduit for transferring advanced astronomical and architectural knowledge to the Maya. The architectural designs of the Maya, seen in their pyramids, temples, and cities, reflect a level of technological and engineering skill that seems almost ahead of their time. Were these skills handed down from a previous, more advanced civilization? The mathematical systems of the Maya, including their use of zero, a concept rare in the ancient world, were integral to their astronomical calculations. 
Hancock proposes that this mathematical sophistication too might be a legacy from a forgotten civilization. We're not what it's all about at all. Uh, that there may have been an earlier civilization that reached a high level of advancement, perhaps different from ours, but nevertheless an advanced civilization, which was just taken out of the story completely by a global cataclysm. In a tale woven from the threads of ancient mysteries, Graham Hancock, a modern day seeker of lost truths, presents a fascinating theory. He imagines a world where an advanced civilization predating the ancient cultures known to history, once thrived. This civilization, possibly flourishing before the last ice age ended around 10,000 BCE, was a beacon of knowledge in fields like astronomy, architecture, and mathematics. Hancock's story tells of a society whose influence stretched far beyond its own time and space, touching various corners of the ancient world, including the enigmatic Maya civilization. I think, and it's my case, that it wiped our memory of a previous episode of, of human civilization, that right at the epicenter of this cataclysm was a civilization that we would regard as advanced, not a simple hunter-gatherer civilization, which was utterly wiped out uh, in this cataclysmic event. However, this ancient global society in Hancock's story faced a dramatic and catastrophic end. He hypothesizes that a cataclysmic event such as a comet impact or a massive flood nearly obliterated this civilization. But not all was lost. The survivors, carrying the torch of their advanced knowledge, ventured out into the world. These bearers of ancient wisdom found their way to other, less advanced societies and shared their knowledge, planting the seeds for new civilizations to grow. Among these were the Maya, who, in Hancock's view, may have been one of the many inheritors of this ancient legacy. Hancock points to the Maya's remarkable architectural and astronomical achievements as evidence of this influence. The precision of their calendar systems, their understanding of celestial cycles, and the alignment of their buildings with astronomical events are, in his narrative, not just the fruits of their own ingenuity, but possibly a heritage from a civilization lost in the mists of time. He draws parallels between the architectural styles, religious beliefs, and astronomical knowledge found across various ancient cultures, suggesting these similarities might be remnants of a shared source of ancient wisdom. Because we now know that at that time, between 12,800 and 11,600 years ago, truly global cataclysmic events involving rapid rises in sea level yeah. uh, did occur, and suddenly the, the worldwide tradition of a, of a global flood stops being just a myth and starts being a memory. In a narrative that intertwines the mysteries of ancient seas with the Maya calendar, Graham Hancock, a storyteller of history's hidden chapters, brings to life his theories of a bygone era. He paints a picture of an ancient world, not fragmented by vast oceans, but connected through them. This world, according to Hancock, was home to a sophisticated global maritime culture. This culture, adept in the art of navigation and shipbuilding, embarked on extensive sea voyages, knitting together the far-flung civilizations of the ancient world. Hancock's tale is not just about the movement of ships, but also about the flow of ideas, technologies, and beliefs. He sees the similarities in architectural styles and construction techniques across different ancient cultures as whispers of a shared knowledge, possibly disseminated through this maritime network. In this story, ancient seafarers are the unsung heroes, ferrying not just goods, but also the seeds of culture and religion across the world's watery expanse. He draws parallels with the Polynesian navigators, known for their remarkable oceanic voyages, suggesting that similar capabilities could have existed among these ancient maritime cultures. They're telling us that uh, this lost civilization was submerged in a great flood around 11,600 years before our time. This is why I think we need to pay attention to the Atlantis story rather than just write it off as the ravings of the lunatic fringe. But Hancock's narrative takes an intriguing turn as he touches upon the mysterious Maya civilization and their long count calendar. This calendar, a sophisticated timekeeping system, tracks a cycle of approximately 5,125 years, culminating in a date that modern calendars align with December 21st, 2012. Hancock, weaving a tale from the threads of time, views this not as an apocalyptic end, but as a significant moment in Maya cosmology. 
a marker of major transition or transformation. In this story, the 2012 phenomenon is not a tale of doom, but a moment of cosmological significance, possibly indicating a shift in human consciousness or the dawn of a new era in human history. Hancock uses this moment to discuss the broader concept of historical cycles, how ancient civilizations understood and measured time, and their alignment with astronomical events such as the precession of the equinoxes and the galaxy's alignment. Graham Hancock, a modern-day chronicler of lost civilizations, presents a captivating theory. He tells a story of Earth's history punctuated by cataclysmic events, asteroid impacts, massive floods, and volcanic eruptions, that have periodically reshaped the course of human civilization. In this tale, these cataclysms are not just natural disasters, but pivotal moments that lead to the rise and fall of civilizations, causing a reset of human progress.